Well, Mark, let's start with the uh, million dollar question, I suppose. And uh, probably if you could answer it, you, you mm. wouldn't be in football. You'd be uh, living on a, on a uh, Caribbean island somewhere. But Phil on Facebook asks it, why is a club with no debt and the biggest crowds by far in the division looking unlikely to get promoted automatically? Um, looking unlikely, I think it's a little bit steep. I still think there's, there's a pretty decent chance that we could get promoted automatically. So there, let's not discount that one for the second. But assuming we don't, um, the question then falls down to with the biggest gates in the league and, and debt-free, why have we not been promoted? Yeah, let's go at it from that angle, which I'm happy to do so. Um, it's it's a complicated one. I mean, one of the briefs I had when I first came in was to, to get to clear the club's debt and consistently turn in not a profit but a non-loss making um, budget each year. So that's great, and it is the correct way to run a football club. But it also puts us under a lot of restrictions when we're up against um, teams in this division where the owners are one. Um, happy to ring up million pound plus debts each year and keep adding that onto their debt mounting or two you know they, they ring up a debt and then a rich owner or whoever and investors are quite happy to keep putting money in so that's not our model uh, however saying that we do have one of the biggest budgets in the league and, mm. and as an executive and as a, as a board of directors that's really what we can do we can deliver a good manager we can deliver a really really good budget that enables us to get hopefully some of the best players in the league onto the pitch so that's what we've managed to do we've done that this year I think we've improved significantly this year from where we've been in previous years and as long as we keep that momentum going then then in the future I'm sure we'll get to where we want to get to. You mentioned Paul Cook today uh, mm. and jokingly but there's a serious side to the question we said do you realise you're now safe from relegation after Saturday but mm. of course that's what Pompey fans have been doing now for the last seven or eight years looking over their shoulders that way yep. so it's a bit in recent times, it's a bit of a revelation to be looking upwards. Yeah, it's, it's not as easy as people think, Johnny. Um, we've, we've spoken about this on the way to games before. That <coughs> I think it's eight, nine, ten years. I can't remember what the exact amount is since the club was in the Premiership of, of constant league decline. Mm. So it, it's been going like that for so long. The first thing we had to do was draw a line and say, go, right, this is it now, and, and start to work our way up. But it's not saying you could just flick a switch, you know. Even the last two years, we dropped from... 16th I'm sorry from 13th to 16th mm. um, is that right I think it is isn't it yeah mm. we went from 13th mm. uh, and then and then it was 16th last mm. season which is our lowest of the low um, and this year hopefully touch wood even if we don't go it looks like there will be an improvement but that would be the first turnaround for like I say eight nine ten years and and it's important to do that in any business we've got ourselves in a great great position off the pitch and that was a, a, so important to do that after years of decline we've got investment going into Fratton Park we've got the training ground we're debt free hopefully this will be our third successive year of, of no losses operational losses for the club and and that trust me that will come right on the football pack pitch and I know it's frustrating but we are going in the right direction and, and hopefully this will just be the start this year of where we'll be going in the future because our foundation is so solid but we've got to have a period of stability now, linked to that, and just as impossible to ask, one would imagine, several fans say, why do you think our form has been so inconsistent this season? Well, that's the one. If, if I knew that, then I would be on a, a, a Caribbean island laying on the beach because I just don't know. In, in games, certain games, we look like we could take championship teams apart, you know, and, and have done so. And then in other games, we look really poor. It's, I think it's about the opposition we're, we're playing against. If you ask my personal opinion, in that when we tend to play against teams that want to play football, we tend to play football because that's what we are, a footballing team. But possibly our Achilles heel is, at this moment in time, we, we do struggle on the whole against big, strong, physical teams that don't want to play football. They want to frustrate. They want to time waste. They want to get in our faces. They want to make it difficult. And, I'm, and by the way, I'm not criticising them for that because that's what they do on their budget. But what we want to do is we want to play football. And, and that's what we endeavour to do week in, week out. Now, in the event that we do not get promoted, mm -hmm. and as you, as you stress, it, it's, 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 not it's, given. it's up in the air. Mm -hmm. In the event we do not get promoted, Greg on Twitter asks, would the transfer limit be extended or would we have to use who we have? No, I think whether we're promoted or not, there's very little difference in going up to League One financially other than I'm pretty sure possibly 
how 11 and a half thousand season tickets and, and there's a club that has got no external debt and no external in investment at the minute coming in to support the playing side of the business then you know we, we as Ian McInnes always says we eat what we kill and and what we kill is obviously our season ticket holders in regards of that financial muscle is what we can put onto the pitch and we've always said that where we've had a cup run um, where we had a player sell and 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 when our season tickets and match day ticket sales are so great we endeavour to get that money back on the pitch you know we, all the infrastructure projects are committed so we, we spend that extra money on trying to get the best the best players we can on onto the pitch on a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. so um, it, it's a difficult one but yeah it's going into League One you know, with the extra salaries we'll have to pay and the extra costs associated with it. Um, there's very little extra money. However, our budget will go up exponentially. So that should give us, again, another competitive budget in League One. But if we end up in League Two, once again next year, we will have a competitive budget, no matter what the outcome. Now, second best scenario, one would suppose, if you didn't go automatically up, is to go to Wembley in the playoff final. Mm. So potentially, Paul on Instagram asks, how much could Pompey gain financially out of a playoff final? Um, obviously, if you're going to go up via the playoffs, financially that is the, the best route, but it's not as much as, as people think in respect that. And, and I have to admit now I'm on Pompey's side of the fence. I'm disappointed with this. But when, when you're in a playoffs, all the revenue gets shared equally amongst the four clubs. So um, we get no real more money than, say, I won't name any other teams because it's disrespectful. I would say there's some other teams in there with not big gates that ended up there. They'd get an equal share of the pie as us. So you do do okay, mm. but it's not it's not something that you would you would would have a significant impact on our finances. Going on to something quite topical as well. Are you concerned by the reaction of the fans in the last couple of games, with some even turning on each other, Lorraine on Facebook? Yes, I am. Um, I think one of Pompey's biggest strength is our unity, it's our passion, it's the sticking together, it's that we're all in it together. And I have seen, you know, me and you have discussed a lot of the instances that have, have mm. gone on recently um, with lifelong fans, they say, saying they're, they're seriously considering whether mm. they'll ever, ever go again. And, and that is quite shocking to me because as, as we sit here at this moment in time, yes, there have been frustrations, but we are fifth in the league. Um, and you, you know, and, and to see some of the things that have gone on, at, especially at away games, although there has been an element of it at, at home games, is disappointing. But it is such a very small minority. That's what we've got to be careful of. I don't like bringing attention to this because if by bringing attention to say maybe one or half a percent of our total fan base, you risk dragging 99 or 99.9% .9 of our fan base through the mud and, and I'm not keen to do that. So the vast absolute majority of our fans continue to be loyal, supportive, do all the things that we know that Pompey fans can do, but we just got to watch that very, very small minority, you know, uh, don't spoil the enjoyment for everyone else. Right, multiple fans on social media, which you might expect, and um, I think I know what the answer is here, but why, why was Matt Tubbs allowed, allowed out on loan to Eastleigh? He was last season's League Two top scorer and was scoring goals at the start of the season. I mean, it's a decision for the manager. It's, yeah. it's not as a chief executive, as a board, as an FD. All we ever do is back the manager um, and anything really player related is, is totally a decision for the manager. And I've been very protective as a fan-owned club, especially to ha never have any accusations held against either myself, Tony Brown, the FD, Ian McInnes, the chairman, or the board of directors that we have interfered in the playing side because we've deliberately gone the absolute opposite way to that, to not have that, that accusation levelled against us. So in regards to Matt Tubbs, whatever the personal opinions of anyone else might be, it's purely a decision for the manager. Right, let's change tack completely. Why is my seat in the fratten end always covered in bird mess? And let's let's just tell you we edited the word mess. So it says, it says Eugene on Instagram. Um, we have had a pigeon problem, believe it or not. They they get up in, into the rafters in all the stands. Um, all the all the seats are cleaned down during the week leading up to the game, as you know. But unfortunately, it's just even the night before the game, you know, pigeons are up there and 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 doing what they do. Uh, Leave, leaving a mess but um, I think a week or two ago we employed the services of a, a hawk I don't know yeah, I don't know yeah, if he was aware yeah. of that um, and that, and we, we got a hawk in 
um, that, that basically went around. Hopefully, it scared the pigeons away and send a bit of a message out not to come and um, mess on our parade as such. Yeah, but um, I don't know how, how good that's done. But there's very little we can do when the pigeons get up underneath the rafters and um, and do what they do. Yeah, you can. We do get them cleaned on a Friday. We get them cleaned down on a Friday, morning. ready for the Saturday. But again, you can't. The leading hours of the game, you can't have a, an army of cleaners in in the stands cleaning cleaning bird poo. Right. Number seven, being from the Isle of Wight and season ticket holder, getting across to Portsmouth is expensive. Is there any chance you can get us discounts with White Link, you and on Instagram? And I'll just chuckle at that because, you know, <laughs> what we've, we've gone through. We've had yeah. continual meetings with them. Yeah, as, as, as you'll know, that, that we've had continual meetings with White Link over um, trying to get the latest sailings and to accommodate our fans. Um, and we've, we've managed to do yeah, that, to be yeah. fair. And that touch wood, that seems to have gone a lot better now. But... In regards of a price reduction, um, I'm not sure that they see it as quite lucrative. Obviously, it's a good opportunity for them to, I don't think they put the prices up, which I would obviously be annoyed at, but to hold the price, I don't see why on a popular route they would look to cut the prices because it would just be cutting their own revenue. Yeah, and we have to say that they've, they've worked considerably to, to send boats back later on, the, on yeah, an evening yeah, kickoff. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's been an ongoing issue here for... Yeah since you've ever since you've been here and and we've managed to sort that out so to go back to them now and say oh and by the way can you start cutting your prices i'm not sure we'd get very far with it but i will have a go right back to uh something you're more probably expert with um and probably in line with the matt tubbs question why are we signing so many loans when we were led to believe there was a kitty to buy players matt on twitter <laughs> 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 All right, Matt. I thought we agreed. We was going to keep that quiet. <laughs> no, it's uh, again. It's, it's a decision for the manager. You know, all the, all the clubs you tend to use the, the loan signing, um, which is the last year of it now. The loan, loan signing rule, the emergency loan rule as well. You know, through the season, and, and we're no different. If Paul sees that an area specifically needs strengthening, then he will go out and use the uh, loan market. But it's important to realise next year. You know that um, I'm not sure all supporters are aware of this that. You can use do window to window loans next year, but the emergency loan market will close. Mm. So um, a lot next year will be down to the strength and depth of your squad. And, and you know, obviously myself, Paul, Tony, Ian McInnes, the ball. We've all discussed this, and you know, we think it probably might work to our advantage that next year when you can't just go and bring loan signings in like we've done this year. To be fair, but like a lot of other clubs do as well. So 14 games to go. Yeah. What's your gut feeling that? question comes from me <gasps> me sitting opposite you i hate to say oh god it's terrible um I, I tend to agree i think that the, the automatics are going to be really really difficult now for us um i take comfort from the fact only for the odd game we've been outside of the playoffs this year so if, if i was a betting man now and you said put your house on a position i think we'd probably end up in the playoffs yeah mm. and that'll be uh that'd be good yeah, I think, listen, from where we were last year, where we were have been as a club over recent years, it's it's the first stages of what I see as, as real, real yeah, green re shoots and recovery moving yeah. forward, yeah. Yeah, well, we yeah. can't argue with that. No. Um, we let it, we've let you off easy this week, but uh, it's good. this month. So. It's amazing what a win does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing, indeed. Yeah.